Hey everyone. Hi Lynn. How's the sound? So if you saw my post on Facebook, you know that we're going to be working with some butterfly products today. So I'm going to be working with the Just Lou Butterfly Collection die set. This is the Stencil JL18 set. It comes with three different dies, this, the um, etched pieces there, and then also the solids. So you actually get six, six pieces in this die set. I'll just take these out and show them to you here. So there's um, an outline die for each one of these etched ones. So it's very cool. This one goes with this guy. And then this goes with this one. So you get those six pieces so that you can cut the backing piece separate as a solid. And then you can cut the overlay piece um, with the, the delicate overlay. This is the, the overlay for that one. I have cut those out of some vellum. So I did do a bunch of cutting ahead of time just because we're live and it just works better that way. Um, please excuse my messy desk. I've got a lot of stuff out for us to practice with and play with. And this is definitely a product play session. And I'm just gonna be showing you some different ways that you can work with this die set. I did actually on my Mari Clark Creations blog, so it's mariclarkcreations.com. That's my old blog. I did create a blog post that's a coordinating blog post for this live so that you can go over there and you can check out where you can find these products. But um, for me, these products come from Ecstasy Crafts and Ecstasy Crafts has both a .com and .ca site. I know that they do ship internationally and there is a division in Canada and the US. They have super fast shipping. They have a ton of stuff in their shop and they have, they get in all of the Studio Light products and I'm so in love with the Studio Light stuff. It's just really great. And we're gonna play with some of um, the products from Studio Light and some other uh, products that Ecstasy Crafts carries as well. So what I thought I would start with here and experiment with is some cardstock um, butterflies here. So I see I've got a few people jumping on. I can see Janice is here and I can see Diane and Diane Barnes and Susan. So nice to see everybody. Thanks so much for, for joining. And uh, definitely just comment away in the comment section if you've got questions as we're going through. I will uh, check over with the comments uh, as I'm going along here. And uh, Lynn is in the comment section as well. So she is there to help us out and offer a little bit of support as well. So thank you, Lynn. So what I thought I would do, um, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I did with these three in a minute. I'm just going to set those ones aside for now. And I'm going to start with some blank bases. So I'm going to grab one of each butterfly here. So I've got that one and that one. And trying to find the other shape here. I should have it. Pretty sure I cut them all. Yep, they're all here. Okay, so what I thought I would start with here is some distress sprays and some, or distress oxide sprays and distress oxide ink because I feel like those are products that probably a lot of people have. So what I thought I would do is um okay i see diane can't stay for very long that's okay diane i will save this for sure so if you miss um you've got something you have to do i know for lots of people this is over the dinner hour it's kind of hard to pick a time right that's going to suit everybody so if you've got stuff going on i am definitely going to save this um for replay and i'm also going to save it to youtube as well so um, definitely you'll be able to watch wherever you are or if you want to watch, you can definitely do that on the replay. So this is some Distress Oxide Speckled Egg, and I am using one of the new um, dome um, 
foam applicators from Ranger and I'm going to just blend some of this onto my butterfly. Uh, this paper that I'm working on here is mixed media paper from that I purchased at Michael's. It's just the Strathmore mixed media paper. So it's a nice heavy mixed media paper that's easily accessible. In other words, it's easy for you to find, especially if you live near a Michael's, but if you have an art store nearby, they would also carry this, I'm sure. And also if you have Vicki Booten Foundations paper, you definitely could use that too. Um, Okay, so we'll do a couple with the um, with the, the ink, the Distress Oxide ink with the applicator. We're going to do one with some spice marmalade. So I've got a clean applicator for that one. I'm going to just apply some of that on here. Sorry for my table shake. I always say that I need a more stable table to work on. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does shake. So that's a really pretty color too. I used the, I like the speckled egg with the kind of orange tones just because they're complementary colors. So um, I just thought that would be a pretty color scheme to work with tonight. So we've got three that I have ink blended on. And I am going to also do some spraying with some Distress Oxide ink spray, Distress Oxide spray, like I mentioned. So give that a shake. And we'll do one with a speckled egg spray and then I've got the Spice Marmalade spray. I don't have all of these Distress Oxide spray colors. I would really like to get them though because they're really great. Um, Ecstasy Crafts carries the ink pads. I don't think they have the Distress Oxide sprays. I don't think so anyways, but I'm gonna show you another product that they do have that is so cool. Okay, I am going to be doing a little bit of drying with my heat tool, so please bear with me. I know that this is a little bit noisy, but I definitely recommend this when you're working with the Distress Oxide sprays. just because you will get some really cool effects by drying it with your heat tool and also we will be able to move on much more quickly <laughs> if I dry this with my heat tool. So for me, the heat tool is definitely a must have tool in my stash of tools that I use for different mixed media techniques. Definitely one of my most used tools, I would say, for sure. I got quite a bit of spray on there, so it's taking a hot minute to dry. I won't be quite as liberal with my next color. Did you guys, did you realize that it is not easy to craft and talk at the same time? <laughs> There's so many things that you learn about crafting when you go live. Sometimes I, I don't really think I realize how kind of awkward I am until I listen to it back and then I'm like, oh boy, are you sure you wanna do that again? <laughs> but anyways, you know, it's good to do things that are outside of your comfort zone once in a while, right? Okay, this is a different shape than that last one, but these this die set is just really, really fun. And one of the things that I think is really super cool about the Studio Light products is that they're, the price point is really great. So if you go over to Ecstasy Crafts and you check it out, you will see that the price point on their products is quite good. I think anyways, I think it's really economical. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I mean, I feel like talking to yourself while you're crafting 
is a thing. Anyways, Lynn, I agree. In fact, perhaps I need to do more of it to practice for these lives, right? It may be just really great practice. So for this one, you saw what I did there. I spritzed on just a little bit of the Distress Oxide Spray and then I put some water on it and now I'm letting it flow. So we'll see what different uh, kind of effect we get with this one applying it in that way instead of the way that I did with the speckled egg. So just, you know what, with these different mediums, if you've never tried them before and you get them, just mess around with them and have some fun and see what kinds of effects you can get with them, but they are a lot of fun to play with. If you've ever watched Tim Holtz before, holy doodle, you can do all sorts of things with these products. They're pretty fun for sure. Now that's not quite dry. I'm just gonna lift, let it sit over there, but I will show you here too. We'll just take the one that has the, um, the heavier application of the oxide spray and we'll just spritz it with a little bit of water and then see if we can get it to oxidize a little bit with the water and get a little bit more of an effect on it. I have to just let it sit on there for a second to get a little bit of an effect. But it does actually, you can see, well, hopefully you can see there, I'll hold it up to the camera. You can get, you can see a little bit of a reaction happening there and the color is pooling on top and it almost kind of looks a little bit green there, doesn't it? Kind of interesting. The properties of these different uh, products are pretty fascinating to me, that's for sure. I don't know how these chemists figure all of this stuff out, but it's it's very cool. Okay, so I've got, I have two with the Distress Oxide spray now, and I have three that have the Distress Oxide ink. And this one I thought it would be fun to show you. This uh, product here. Um, okay. Uh, Diane is just saying, sorry, Di I was just reading the comments. Diane is saying that she got her product for the class. So Diane is one of the people that's uh, taking the uh, Artful Planner class. Let me just talk about the, the planner class for a second. Um, I do have a class that's launching on April 15th. It is for sale right now on mariclark.com. So not mariclarkcreations.com, it's mariclark.com. I'll maybe get Lynn to leave the link in the comments. Um, and on that site, uh, there's a bunch of information on the site. There's a bunch of different categories that you can look at, including classes. And in the classes category, um, that's where you can register for the class. The class is $15 Canadian. So if you're US, it's a little bit less than that. And uh, it is it's quite a long class actually. There's a lot of content there and it's on a lot of different topics. So it's not just because the title of the class is The Artful Planner, it's not just about planning. It's actually about a bunch of different things. So there's a section in the class about, about scrapbooking in a smaller format. And there's another section about art journaling and there's a section about using it, your uh, A5 uh, size as a planner and then there's also a bonus class where I teach you how to make your own custom uh, cover for an art journal or a planner if you want or a memory keeping um, book as well so it's actually a pretty fun class and um, it is for sale right now if you do buy the class before the 15th or whenever you buy the class I send you out an email that gives you a coupon code that gives you a discount with Ecstasy Crafts and you can go in there and shop. You can shop the whole entire shop, Ecstasy Crafts, and you can. they've also put a bundle together for my class and you can just, um, the link to the bundles in the email that I send out and you can go and purchase that. And some people have purchased it already and they've already got their bundle and they're ready to start the class. But um, the class is evergreen. It's recorded. It's a it's a self-paced class, so it's not like it's live on the 15th and then, um, you know, will never be available again. It's, it's available starting on the 15th to watch and to participate in, and it does include live Facebook um, private group chats and that kind of thing as well. So it's a pretty fun class. Uh, it did take, it was a lot of work to put it together, but it was a lot of fun. And um, I'm really excited about it. So that's, um, bye Diane, see you, talk to you soon. 
and we definitely um I think it's going to be really fun and I have put some sneak peeks on Facebook of the class and on Instagram and stuff so people can take a look at what the different um things look like on there whatever but yeah so that's coming up soon so check it out if you're interested uh this is cosmic shimmer airless mister and you are going to not believe what you see when I spray this this is a really really cool product and one thing that ecstasy crafts was selling and and I purchased snapped one up and they sent it out to me um was there was they were selling mixed media um, kits where it's kind of had like a smorgasbord of different products in it and it was a really good deal and I'm going to show you some of those products tonight but one of the things that was in it in this kit was this airless mister and this one is and it's they're all pearlescent and this one is copper blaze and it's really cool the way that it sprays so I'm going to show you that just going to make sure all of the mica is mixed up <laughs> Um, yeah, Lynn, this is very cool. I'm going to show you guys some really cool stuff here tonight. Okay, so just look how easy that was to apply. The um, way that the mister sprays out is really nice and con it's quite controlled. And you get you do get a good amount when it comes out. I don't have any other colors. I only have this Copper Blaze, but I would really like to get some more. I don't know if you've ever tried the Cosmic Shiver, pro sh not Shiver, <laughs> Cosmic Shimmer products, but they are really, really cool. And I have a few fun things to share with you here tonight for the Cosmic Shimmer products. This is gorgeous. So I don't know, can you see the, the sparkle on there? So pretty. So I'm just letting this dry with my heat tool and I have no shame tonight. I actually texted my kids uh, and told them to watch the Facebook live, but uh, none of them answered me. <laughs> so I think probably they thought, mom, are you crazy? Like we have lives to live here. <laughs> anyway, I don't think any of them are on, but anyhow. It's all good, right? This is so pretty. Like it does really look like the color of a penny. So if that's a product color that you've been looking for, that's been hard to find. Like I know I have tried to find um, embossing powder in kind of a copper color that's like a true penny color. And I would say this is it, like that is gorgeous. It's really beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see how pretty it is, but okay, so that's another one that we are going to make a butterfly with. I'll just clean up my table. I do really love my Tim Holtz glass mat for doing things like this because it's super easy to clean up. And you know what I think is the best thing to clean this with, and I probably heard this from Tim Holtz, is um, a hand sanitizer. It's really good for that. Okay, some other products that I used on some more butterflies here. So I've got three that I have mixed media stuff on that I use stencils on. So I used these three stencils. So I'm going to show you which stencils these are because they're black and Obviously, we cannot see that here, but I am just noticing that I don't think I have the packaging for this fan kind of shaped one, so I'm not sure what the number is on this one, but it is the one that has on the other side, and they come with packs of two. This one has a butterfly shape on the other side of it, so this is what it looks like here. So these come in packs of two. You get two in a set. They're a super good price point. And this one, like I said, the other side of it is a butterfly. And I'm not sure what the number on this one is, but they're under the Just Lou Butterfly Collection on Ecstasy Crafts. And even if you do a search in Ecstasy Crafts for Studio Light Just Lou, you'll get to see all of that Just Lou collection. And it's really nice stuff. It's beautiful. And then these stencils here then are the ones that are this set here. You can see them. And this one is called Mask JL14. So they're, they refer to them as masks. It's kind of interesting. This is a Dutch company. 
and they refer to the what we might call stencils as masks although sometimes I do see our stencils referred to as masks it depends on what they're meant to be used for but they call all of these masks and they call lots of their dyes stencils so that's interesting okay so let me tell you about the products I used here I used um, oh and I don't think oh I see what I did here. this darker color here which is not on this butterfly but because this is a different product this product here that's the darker purple is this guy and this is the luster polish so this is cosmic shimmer luster polish and I don't know if the light here is going to do this justice. I do have another light here, but it's going to cause a glare on my mat, but maybe I'll just leave it on long enough so that you can see the shimmer on these particular papers. But so this one, this darker one there is the Luster Polish from Cosmic Shimmer, and it comes with, and I'll show you what type of applicator it comes with here when I show you this other one. This one here, the lighter kind of iridescent purple is called Opal Polish. So uh, they're very similar. The opal polish is kind of a little bit more iridescent and they all come with this applicator on the top. You just take it out and it's super easy to clean. It clean, cleans up really easy with water and you just unscrew this. And I used the lid because there was quite a bit in the lid, but I just like smooshed it around in the lid and got it onto the applicator. And then I ran it across the stencil and it was super, super easy to do. I did not do it on camera because it took some time for it to dry. Not too long, but I just wasn't really sure how long it was going to take to dry. So I wanted to do it ahead of time. But isn't that gorgeous? Super, super pretty. So if you like to do this kind of thing on cards or for an art journal or scrapbooking, really anything, anything at all. This one is, let's see. What did I do? Oh, it's over here. This product here is called Metallic Gilding Polish. So same kind of applicator. It just has creates a little bit of a different effect in the sense that it's metallic. Um, so these products are so fun. I love them. They're really, really pretty. So I wanted to show you those. And I also, I have one more to show you. This one here. And this is just gorgeous. This is Luna Paste. And again, that is a Cosmic Shimmer product as well. So Cosmic Shimmer Luna Paste. And this one is called Moonlight Ocean. So again, just a beautiful effect. And I just actually ran it through one of those stencils again, just using a spatula. This is my Nouveau spatula. And uh, just like you don't need much, just a thin coat and it creates that beautiful shimmery um, result. So just gorgeous, love it. And so that is how I created the different textures on these different butterflies, okay? So what we're gonna do now that our, everything's probably dry at this point, I am going to go back to this guy here and I am going to do some stamping on that. So I'm going to grab a stamp and I'm going to use a, this is just a bucket of Studio Light product, but I am going to use this one. And I'm going to use this, I actually just got this and it is really great. I was showing it to Lynn. It's a really cool, um, some of you might have this. Actually, it's from All and Create, and it's their stamp. Um, it's like a stamp block, but it's it's quite flexible, and it's really thin. So it's really great for using these this kind of a stamp that is um, that you might want to add. You know, flex it a little bit, but also they're just really super easy to work with. And the nice thing about them for our Studio Light stamps is that they're wide enough for them and they're long enough. So this is a really nice stamp block. I know Lynn, it's just really great. It's awesome. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm actually gonna do some tone on tone stamping. 
So I'm actually going to stamp over top of that with some speckled egg uh, ink. So this is the speckled egg spray and I'm going to stamp. I'm just going to grab a random area on my stamp here. And I'm going to stamp on that. We'll see what we get. Very cool. So you see it's kind of a tone on tone sort of a look. I don't know how the light is going here. Can you see okay? Let me know if you guys can, if you're having trouble seeing that. Um, I can turn this light on again, but it's just it glares on the on the glass mat a little bit, but it is quite a nice effect, the tone on tone. And you can see there's like some little bubbles on there. There's some text and then that floral, there's a little bit of grid. That is a really good stamp. That's one of the Studio Light Grunge stamps in, it's number 497. And there's also a foam dot on the back. <laughs> Very useful. Um, so yeah, I do really like that. I love the tone on tone. We could also do tone on tone with, this is the Distress ink that I blended on here. So let's try stamping on there. See there, it shows up quite a bit better than on the, the one with the spray. So it just kind of depends on the look that you're going for, right? It really does, but I love that. I really love that. So for one of the layers on your butterflies, you could do tone on tone stamping. This is both with the Distress Oxide ink pad with that one. And then again, this is the spray with the ink pad stamped over top. So definitely get two different, two different looks there for sure. Okay. All right. So now we are going to move right along. I'm going to clean this stamp up a little bit. Get that color off of there. I have my Gina K stamp shammy tidy towel I guess it's called and this time let's use we'll go with the we'll, we'll do tone on tone on tone with the orange with the the spice marmalade too but with this one maybe we'll go black and see what that looks like but I'm going to grab a different stamp so that you can see some different types of stamps here This is the Grunge 496. Grunge 496. And it's got some really neat markings on it too. It's got a little bit of larger text on it. Let's go with the Spice Marmalade ink. So we're going to get this a similar effect to what we got obviously with our speckled egg ones there. Very pretty. And just add some texture, right? And because this is Distress Oxide, if you wanted to go ahead and add some, some embossing in some of the areas, you could totally do that. Maybe we should do that. That might be kind of fun. The Distress Oxide ink is just a really super slow drying ink. You could heat emboss over top of that for the next hour probably and still not have to add any um, any more ink to it. Um, okay, let me know. Do you think? Do you want to see this with a little bit of heat embossing on it? What do you think? I just would have to grab my embossing powder. Let me know if you'd like to see that. What do you think, Lynn? Should we go for it? I'm just going to grab some gold embossing powder. So 
sorry about that. That was just out of reach. Okay, yes to the heat embossing. Okay, so I've got some gold. I don't have any gold from Ecstasy Crafts. I do have, Cosmic Shimmer does have a detail embossing powder kits. So this one has white, clear, and black in it. Um, and then I also have another Cosmic Shimmer. We could actually try this. You could try this too. Let's try this one. But I don't, I don't think it's as good a color as gold on top of this spice marmalade, that's all. Okay. Lynn, are you so proud of me? I remembered to put paper down on my table. <laughs> okay, the thing is that, you know, when there's Distress Oxide ink on here, it's going to stick to everything. So the embossing powder is going to stick to everything. So you just have to, you know, be strategic kind of about where you're putting it. And just remember that it's gonna, it will just stick everywhere. So you're gonna have to just go in. I'm gonna just take this brush and brush some of it off here and there so that I've got it just, you know, in a few little spots. But yeah, the Distress Oxide ink takes a really long time to dry. So if you don't want embossing powder to stick to it, it's important to let it dry, probably even overnight. Okay, so sorry for the noise. But this is going to look really nice on the, on the Spice Marmalade ink. The gold will look really pretty on there. So it's going to kind of look you won't see the, the really fine detail of the stamp as well because the oxide ink was still a little bit wet, but you get a little bit of an idea of how that would look with some gold embossing powder on it. It's really pretty. Uh, what we could do now, because we've got, oh, this one, yes, this one's still gonna be wet. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take a blank one. Let's take a blank butterfly here. Actually, of course, because I didn't, because I had my paper down there ahead of time, I didn't, um, I didn't spill any of the embossing powder that time. Okay, so let's do a little bit of heat embossing on a blank one here. I'm just going to take my anti-static powder tool here and brush some of that on there. And that way, in theory, our embossing powder should only stick to our ink. Now I'm already getting quite a mess on my desk here. And when that happens, I start to lose things. We can just use this stamp. It's probably just as easy. <clears throat> and just make sure that it's good and dry. I'm just kind of trying to find an area on this stamp that might be interesting. Maybe just this floral area at the top. So we'll take our Versamark Ecstasy Crafts does have embossing ink pads. I think they might be Couture Creations is the brand that they sell. And like I said, I have linked um, underneath my post on Facebook of notification of this live. I linked to my Marie Claire Creations um, blog. And over there, I linked to the products or where you can find the products at Ecstasy Crafts. That actually needed more ink on it. Can't even see it. Okay, let's try this stuff. I actually have never tried this yet. This is Cosmic Shimmer. I'll tell you what the color is in a second, but it's got all a bunch of different colors in it. It looks very interesting looks very interesting. Ooh, I'm excited. Look at that. Oh, that's fun. It's nice to try new things. <laughs> it's fun to try new things, you guys. Uh, oh, wait, I need to put it back in my thingy here. Getting ahead of myself. Okay, 
Okay, I will tell you exactly what this is right now. This is called Mixed Media Industrial Revolution and it is from Cosmic Shimmer and Ecstasy Crafts does definitely have that um, type of embossing powder. So very cool. Let's heat this up. Let's heat this bad boy up. What do you guys think? Is it going to be good? I think it's going to be gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Look at that. The magic is happening right before our eyes. Ooh. So pretty. I love it. That is gorgeous. Does that all look melted? It's pretty melted. It's quite chunky, this one. It's quite chunky, actually. I love it. That is really pretty. Oh my gosh. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's pretty. It's So that stamp that I used was the same one that I used on the Spice Marmalade. So it's this stamp here. And that's a grunge stamp from Studio Light. Their grunge stamps are so awesome. Um, they're pretty... I feel like they are quite comparable to um, the All in Create in the sense that they are they have that that look to them, right? But they probably aren't the same quality of the type of whatever it is that they use here, whatever this product is. Like if this is photopolymer, I don't really know, but um, it's but it sticks really great to this, the block, and it stamps out wonderfully. And they're such a good price. Like this stamp here, when I bought it, was $15.95. I did not buy this one from Ecstasy Crafts. I bought it somewhere else, but um, it's an older one. They've it's been this one's been around for a while, but they just keep coming out with this more of this grunge collection. I just recently saw the the next grunge collection that's coming. It's amazing. Um, so it's just nice to have some options of ones that aren't quite as pricey. Um, but what I also, what I really like too about this block is you can flex it a little bit. So if you just wanted like a little tiny bit in that area or whatever, it does flex a little bit. I don't want to break it. I don't want to flex it too much, but it does flex. So that's kind of fun. So it's an all in create um, block, um, but it's the Studio Light Grunge stamps for sure. Okay. So we've got some stamping in uh, and some embossing and we have to do something with this one yet. And this one here, actually these two, let's try just some black ink. It's going to be quite a bit harsher, but you know, it might be a look that you really enjoy. So I'm going to grab, um, let's see here. get this one this is called this is grunge 502 so they come in all different you know the, the long and skinny ones they've got smaller um, smaller in that same shape uh, and then they've got sets like this that have like all kinds of stuff going on so they're really fun um, I'm gonna use this one let's see here Let's try, this is actually similar to that shape that we used there. Let's try something different. Um, that star shape is kind of fun. This one here is 503. This one might be better for the smaller size that we have here of our butterfly. Okay, I'm gonna use that same block. I'm going to use the same block just because I don't have a small one out here. Again, this one, the set I'm using is Stamp SL 503. So it's Grunge Stamp 503. And I'm going to use a little bit of VersaFine Claire in Nocturne. And so this is, you know, it's dark, obviously. It's black. So it's going to create... Quite an impression there, right? 
I'm not going to do, I'm just going to do like a little bit here and there, like that. And then we'll get another stamp and we'll do something a little bit different. Maybe some text would be cool on there, but let's use up this ink. That's cool. That's fun. And I'll just go ahead and clean that up. I do like cleaning these before I put them away. This guy here is a little bit of text. And again, we can just go in with the black again. on there. And that just, that looks fun too, right? So it just kind of gives you an idea of how you can, you know, what different mediums um, you can put on there that would look nice, how you can change it up a little bit and make your, your butterflies look different for different projects. And I mean, I would use these on all different kinds of projects, right? You can use these embellishments on scrapbook layouts, on cards. I'm going to show you some different things that you could use these with. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see too many comments unless I'm missing some. Yeah, I like the little bit of text too, Lynn. It's fun. So this is what we've got so far. We've got lots of Lots of butterflies going on here. <laughs> That's a lot of butterflies. We won't make all of them, but I do just want to show you finishing up some of them so that you can get an idea of how you can layer these and finish them up. So what I did cut to, to work with um, on top of these different layers is the vellum just because like that's that's how I like to finish mine but you might you might find that you like to do different things with yours I've got a lot of ink on my fingers here um, so if you had a die a die already in your stash that's similar to this and you wanted to you know work with some different things on there hi Carmelita uh, you could definitely you know finish them in whatever way you want maybe vellum's not your thing or maybe you don't have vellum to work with and so that's not what you would want to do to finish them up but i'm going to show you before we add our vellum over top and um, do some other things here i want to show you what these look like if you were to splatter them and i'm going to grab a splatter here I am going to grab, I would like to grab, oh, here it is. I was going to say, I would like to grab my Dino Wakely Gloss Spray, but I don't see it. So I have this um, Dino Wakely Gloss Spray in a bunch of different colors. It is really, really fun to work with. And I am going to, she spotted all of them? <laughs> Might as well. Why not? What the heck? No worries, Carmelita. It's great that you're here. Thanks for joining us. We're just having fun here. We are just hanging out and having fun. So now I could get my splat box, but I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to have some cleaning to do when I'm done. This stuff is quite messy, but here you can just see I'm just going to splatter with that gloss spray and we're going to get a really nice white splatter on our butterflies i know i feel like a butterfly is sort of like one of those universal things that we use in crafting and art that everybody loves, right? Um, I know, 
I use, you can see that makes quite the mess. <laughs> I like to use them in, you know, in all the different crafting that I do. It doesn't really matter what it is. I enjoy it. So we got quite a large blob on there, which is fine. Just gonna suck a little bit of it up. And I feel like I also want to use a little bit of gold splatter on here too. I'm not gonna clean this up before I do the gold splatter. So I will grab some gold. <laughs> I do really love I know I'm repeating myself, but I do really love to work on this glass mat when I'm doing anything with mixed media because super easy to clean up. Okay, this is some gold Heidi Swap Color Shine. Do you guys still have some in your stash? It's not really going to show up on this. Do you still have it? Do you hoard it? I have a few bottles of it. And... I do really like using it. I do have a little container of water on my table. Um, I highly recommend when you're doing stuff like this to have some water nearby because that way you can put your brushes and that sort of thing in water. That Dina Wakely Gloss Spray is an acrylic product so you don't want to let that sit in your brushes. And I make sure that you at least leave your brush in some water. Okay, I'm gonna show you the magic of hand sanitizer on the glass mat. It works really well. If you're looking for a way to get rid of that stuff that's now all been recalled, <laughs> I feel like this would be a good use for it. Although you probably don't want that touching your hands. But yeah, it just really does clean up the mess quite qu quickly. There, basically all of the splat is gone there. And our little, pretty little butterflies here are just trying to dry. Which one's your favorite so far? Which one do you like? Which one is your fave? Yeah, um, Carmelita Vicky's Gold Glaze, uh, definitely. If you water that down, you basically get the same effect as the Heidi Swap Color Shine. So that's a perfect um, product to use if you're going for this type of effect, right? Any of Vicky's glazes can be watered down and splattered, and you get a really nice effect with them. I actually have splattered, I splattered on my... Um, on my recent project with this Luna paste too. A card that I made for honeybee stamps that comes out on Friday. I splattered with the Luna paste. I just added a little bit of water on my mat here and yeah, it was just easy peasy. And it added just a really nice um, sparkly blue to the project, to the card. I actually made some layered butterflies here. Actually, I've got one left that I used. I used a Just Knit cut file. This is a basic butterfly cut file. Um, and I created these for my project for Nicole for next week. So there's lots of different ways you can accomplish this look. You might have, the, you might have some dyes in your stash too. I do really like these Just Lou dies. They are really fun. The nice thing about a die is that they're easy to use and you buy them once and you have them forever. And if it's a shape that you know that you're gonna use a lot, then you definitely get your money out of them. Like these dies here I'll use for ages on cards and all sorts of different projects. So I used these in the Artful Planner class uh, on 
one of the scrapbooking projects that I did in that class. So people can, can see how I use them in that class too, if you're taking that, if you've signed up for it. It's a really nice layering project. Oh, okay, you can't find the rose gold Carmelita. Some of those products I think are gone, hey? Okay, I don't know Carmelita, I don't know if you saw how I made this one. I don't know if you were on yet, but I used this Airless Mister from Cosmic Shimmer and it's the Copper Blaze. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's a gorgeous one. Um, okay, so now we can start to layer things on. Now, if normally what I would do if I was, um, you know, not doing a live, I would take these down to my sewing machine and I would sew the vellum on there just because I like adding that little bit of texture with the with the vellum and it's a nice way to attach your vellum to a project right to sew it so because I'm not able to be at my sewing machine and it's in the basement of my house I'm going to show you how you can hand stitch this so this is a darning needle um, it's not all that sharp I have to say um, I don't know what I just did with the butterfly that I had in my hand. Hmm. Anyways, you guys probably saw what I did with it, but I'm going to grab another one. <laughs> it's a good thing I've got more than one. Um, okay, so I'm going to use this little, if you have a mouse pad, you can poke through your needle with your mouse pad. This is a little tool that I had for setting eyelets or something I think back in the day. Do you guys remember the eyelet days? Were you a crafter in the eyelet days? <laughs> oh boy, the good old days I guess. I've still got all of those tools. The little hammer. Remember how there was those little sets and there was the hammer in there and all those little parts? Anyway, funny. Okay, so I am going to do a stitch through there. Then I'm going to come up through the hole that I created. So I created three holes. So I went up through that hole, down through the middle hole, up through the bottom hole, and I'm gonna go back through the middle hole again. Now, so classic back stitch, I believe, is what we call that. I don't know. Um, you could do three stitches. I could do a third stitch. Actually, there's room to do that. My pokey tool, I think, works a little bit better than that darning needle. A darning needle is not very sharp. And now we're going to come up through this hole, through our vellum. I hope this isn't like watching paint dry. But anyways... There we have it. Isn't that so pretty? I love it. And then, you know what? You can add another layer to this if you wanted. You could cut a layer out of some pattern paper. You could, you know, totally make this a three layered butterfly easily, right? So you can just keep adding layers to your butterflies and making them look however you would like. And for the back here, I'm just going to grab my little studio light tape caddy. And I'm going to add a little bit of washi to the back of that. And now our little butterfly is good to go. So look at that. And then, you know what? You could even take this to your sewing machine and you could sew around the, the bottom edge or whatever. You can bend these up a little bit, make it much more dimensional. But now this is ready to, to add to your project. So um, I have a little gift box here that I wanted to show you. This is really cute. Um, again, with the orange and blue color scheme. I made that using this die set. This is a, see here we go with the stencils again. This one is called Stencil 393. Stencil SL393, and it makes this really cute little gift box. 
So you get all of these different dies. You can use the different dies to um, decorate your little gift box. That would be good for some little treats, right? It's super cute. So I just used a little bit of washi to tape the bottom. And the die um, scores the lines where it has to be folded. It literally takes about two minutes to, to make this little box with that die. And then I cut some of the dies that are part of the die set to embellish it. And you could definitely use one of these butterflies to decorate your little box. This one's too big. I would use the smallest one or this shape on here would probably even be better. But this is the largest one here. But I'm just showing you how you could decorate different things besides scrapbooking layouts um, with these butterflies. Another thing that I did was I die cut out this little bit. This is another die from Studio Light. I wanted to show you because it's also really cool. This one is called, this one is Stencil SL389 and it cuts out the base that has these hearts on it and then a cutout around the hearts and then you can take the cutaway and you can insert the hearts back in there like in a maybe on some dimensional tape or whatever to create all kinds of different effects. There's a lot of fun ways you could use this but I just thought this is a really pretty way to make a super easy card and then you could take one of your um, butterflies and embellish your card with that and put your sentiment here. Um, so there's some really fun ways to use these butterflies and if you you enjoy mixed media and you enjoy um, putzing around with stuff like this you could make yourself a ton of these and have a, you know a little box of embellishments already made and ready to go so for all of these here I would just do basically the same thing in that I would take and layer my vellum over top and just create my layered butterflies so this is what so this one turned out so pretty I actually really like the black I wasn't sure if I would like the black or not on the speckled egg, but it does look really pretty. I love it. Yeah, you're right, Carmelita. The tails of the thread could totally be antennae. Yes, that's a great idea. Um, and the nice thing about sewing too is sometimes it's kind of tricky to figure out how to attach your vellum. And the nice thing about that thread is it just adds extra texture and, and another little bit of a layer. But Studio Light also has rice paper and I made a card this week, it's posted on YouTube, where I used this same die set and I covered the bottom layer, this layer here, with some of the rice paper and that looks really pretty too. This is some of the Just Lou rice paper but Studio Light has rice paper with lots of their different collections. They just came out with a floral collection. I don't have any of it, but you'll see on their YouTube channel, um, lots of people are using this new collection right now. I think it's called Just Flowers or something like that. But um, this one is Rice JL24 and it's beautiful. I just love that it's got some text and just, it's kind of a vintage look. I love the music notes on it and this here, um, handwriting. I love the, I love anything that has handwriting on it. I think it's just really pretty and then the butterflies so that's gorgeous too but but anyways um yeah so then we also had the solid vellum as well so that's something else that you could do is you could put a layer of the solid vellum on, as your base and then you could layer your um your detailed vellum on top of that so i have got such a mess here on my desk that i can't even find where i put all the rest of the vellum that i cut but that's kind of how it goes, right? So um, I did have, I don't know what I did with that little piece of vellum that I had when I went to look for this guy. I think it must have dropped on my floor somewhere. Anyway, um, I guess you guys get the picture. <laughs> uh, you can see all the different ways that you can use this and super, super fun. Do you guys have any questions? Does anybody have any questions about anything that I did? Yeah, I agree. The script is always a great embellishment touch for sure. It just looks really super pretty and just adds that little extra bit of detail. So uh, once again, don't forget to check out that blog post at marieclarkcreations.com. Um, that's my old blog and I have a blog post there that 
will just talk about and show the different products that I used and also it does give a link to the class but the class can be found on mariclark.com okay so not to be confused with mariclarkcreations.com that is not where you want to go if you're looking for just the class but if you want information about these products and the class you can go to mariclarkcreations.com that is my blog okay i think that's it if you guys don't have any other questions or you're not interested in finding out anything more tonight i will definitely let you guys go and I will head off and I will be back to do a live again soon. Thanks so much for joining me though. I really appreciate it. Thanks Lynn for your help in the comment section. And uh, I did really have fun tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching um, how to make these different um, embellishment butterflies. See you soon. Bye-bye.